it's time to look for a new way of synchronizing our code. Let's synchronize it using the retrain log in Java. But before we start using it, let's understand what it is. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram page, and this is the Tech Skills, bringing you the course of Java development. Now is the section of concurrency. This is our agenda for today. Welcome to the class and let's go. Well, until now we've synchronized our code using the synchronized keyword. It's correct, but we're going to see more sophisticated ways of working. The synchronized keyword provides a basic synchronization. For example, the thread can accurate the lock only once. After the thread, which holds the lock, release the lock, any thread can get the lock. No matter which thread was first to try to execute after the lock has been granted to another thread, it is going to just release and any thread can get the access. That means there is no mechanism of a waiting queue after the exit of a thread. This situation may take us to starvation of resources for some other threads for a very long period of time because we can have, uh, for example, uh, one thread trying to access the synchronized area and that thread arrives at 4 p.m. Okay, then another thread arrives at 5 p.m. and gets the access to the same resource. Well, a thread tried to get the access to that resource at 4 p.m. but another thread was granted the access for the same resource. The thread arrived later than the thread that arrived at 4 p.m. So the thread that arrived at 4 p.m. would get that starvation state because it would be waiting for a long period of time and that's not a fair for us. Java provides us a way to synchronize code with more flexibility. The Rintrend Lock, which is simply a Java class that is going to allow us to do operations related to synchronization. This class implements the lock interface and provides us mechanisms to synchronize methods while accessing shared resources. In our case, the shared resource is the array list, which is data pack. The area of the code that uses the shared resource needs to be surrounded by the calls lock and unlock methods so that the current thread accures a lock and blocks all other threads from taking the lock on the resource that's being shared. So one thread gets the lock, others need to wait. Once the lock has been released, other threads can get the access to that. Only one at a time. Thread can get the lock on a resource more than once. When the thread first enters into the lock, a hold count is set to 1. It can enter again to the lock before unlock and each time this happens, the hold count gets incremented by 1 unit. Every time the thread makes an unlock request, the hold count is decremented by 1 unit. Finally, when the hold counter is 0, the shared resource gets unlocked. With re thread Lock, we can release the lock to the threads following the order of request. We have a mechanism of a waiting queue here. Here are some important methods that we need to have on mind when we work with Rintrend Lock. The lock method is just going to increment the hold count by one and give the lock to the thread if the shared resource is initially free. Unlock decrements the hold count by one. When this count reaches zero, the resource is released. Try lock checks if the resource is not held by any other thread. Then try lock is going to return true if that's the case, and the hold count is going to be incremented by one. If the resource is not free, then the method returns false and the thread is not blocked but exceeds. Well, this is not the complete list of the methods that Rintrend Lock class give us. But these are the most important ones and the ones that we're going to use to demonstrate the usage of this class. Open your environment, you know this image talks by itself and let's go. Okay, we are here in our code. What are we going to do now? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is to modify the class of our production and consumer. 
so that we can use the new way of synchronization well we're going to share this locker among these threads so they all need to have an instance of reentrant lock let's end here an instance and is this reentrant lock it's going to be a reentrant lock here let's add an object reentrant lock and initialize here in the constructor this that reentrant lock is going to be the reentrant lock fine the same needs to be done to the class of our consumers let's put the lock here reentrant lock is going to be here and private reentrant lock reentrant lock is here these problems are related to the main we didn't pass okay so let's go to the main create an instance of the reentrant lock here reentrant lock is going to be equal to new reentrant lock if you want to see more about reentrant lock you can just hover here reentrant lock is here a reentrant mutual exclusion lock with the same basic behavior and semantics as implicit monitor you can read and you're going to find more details of this class now we have to pass to both no to all of the objects that we have in our class i'm going to hold shift alt and click here and here with my cursor comma this is the reentrant lock object okay it's not done we can run it now it's going to work how it was working previously but we didn't make anything yet but let's make sure that it's working fine okay we have now it's time to use the tool that we want which is the reentrant lock inside of our class let's go in the production class what we want to do is to lock this part here lock the access to the shared resource with his data pack and after we add the element we want to unlock so we have to substitute the synchronized here the synchronized block by the calls of lock and unlock let me call here so this was that was reentrant lock reentrant lock that lock okay and after we add we have to release unlock good the same we have to do here reentrant lock lock and reentrant lock reentrant lock unlock and so when our thread comes here it's going to have the lock once it has a lock it can access the data pack which the shared resource do the modification then release the data pack here release the lock to the data pack or to the shared resource which is data pack so that other threads can access now let's remove only one part here run it again to see if we have a problem or not it's not done because we have to do the same to the consumer class let's go to the consumer class because our synchronization is being a mix of synchronized keyword and the reentrant lock so we have to also to work in this class we're going to change the synchronized data pack here what we have to do is lock the access so let's write our reentrant lock lock and here reentrant lock unlock let's run it again and see if we have a problem we're adding a and it stopped okay let's wait a bit let's wait and see what we have 
let's wait and see what we have okay we have an exception maximum log count exceeded why what happened is that this class was executing at a time this loop here also got executed this class had the lock hold the lock came here so if data was empty yes it was empty so it came to the while true had the lock again do you see what's happening the thread that's running this code doesn't give access to the other threads while the data pack is empty and it will be forever because the production cannot produce unless the consumer has the lock forever so if we should have a certain strategy to let this code also grants access to the production even if the data pack is empty because what's happening here is that it has the lock come here is empty it continues and gets the second lock continues get the third lock and so on so maximum lock count exceeds what we have to do is that if data pack is empty we have to grant access to that so rentrant lock we have to just run the unlock because the production needs to have the opportunity to have the lock or any other thread needs to have that opportunity we have to unlock then it's going to continue if this line between two is executed any other thread can access that lock because it has been released and if there's no more data we also need to grant the access unlock okay let's run again and see if we have these problems Doo -doo 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 -doo. working here we have here we have it's working let me run again adding a remove it by thread one thread two two one one adding the last one it's working when we deal with retrain log there's a common implementation that uses the try catch and final that's the most famous implementation and you're going to pretty much see in the documentation on the internet or elsewhere even in books so let's change our implementation to use the try catch and final how we want treat an exception here because the exceptions are already treated here we're just going to use try final but if you have an exception to treat during the execution of the shared resource you have to treat let's just comment this part the reentrant lock no reentrant unlock here also comment just give this comments and let's start with try insert all these commands here try but before we try what we want to do we want to lock so lock try see if data is empty here and finally there's an advantage we just have to release the uh, access on the one side if we had an exception here we would have the catch part catch a certain exception and we would have the final block but how we don't have let's remove and leave it so finally we have to unlock reentrant lock that unlock okay we had here these two commands and now let's just run we're going to get problems and i'm going to explain you why well line 34 reentrant unlock but the problem here is because we have these illegal monitors here we cannot release the access right here but we have to release the access at the final point because we just want to release only us you can see it's going to be what's going to happen here is that this and ring trend that unlock is going to release the lock but here we also are going to release the 
lock which lock we don't know so we have to release the lock that we hold and the lock that we hold needs to be released right here at the finally block so let's come in here run it again and see what we have as output good code running let's take this implementation to the consumer class also here we are we are going to block try put this info right here put this info here finally just unlock for me okay we don't want this and let's come here also let's remove this okay we're just going to comment say try to add this string into the data pack finally grant me the access okay ring trend lock lock here we have let's run it again working working two methods lock and unlock have been seen until now now let's see the try lock now let's come to the consumer class and just make another implementation what we can do here is to use the try lock also while true rather than using green that lock we can say if retrend lock that try lock okay it's going to try to lock if it has the access it's going to hold the counter at one unit and execute what's inside if that happens we want to execute what's inside here that's it so we don't lock we're trying to lock let's run it again okay it's working accuracy the lock only if it's not held by another thread at the time of invocation and here we have more info access the lock if it's not held by another thread and returns immediately with the velo true okay this is basically what you have to know about ring trend lock in java if you want to know more go to the internet google inside of the documentation and you're going to find more info this is what i had to show you and don't forget to revise this one and before you revise let me tell you that you have to follow our instagram page and subscribe to our youtube channel